Shumai Kroiso, hello and welcome to episode 51 of the Bluebird's Nest. A special guest this week as we mark not only International Women's Day this Friday, March the 8th, but also this weekend across all of the Cymru and Adran leagues, clubs will be putting the Her Game 2 and more specifically the Her Game 2 Cymru partnership front and centre. To find out more, I'm really happy to say joining us this week, as you can see, is Sports presenter, reporter, producer, and really importantly, her game to Cymru ambassador, Gabriella Dukes. Gabriella. Hello. Hiya, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And yeah, I'm looking forward to chatting to you about all things uh, Welsh football. Love it. Excellent. Thank you uh, for accepting our invite for this week. We have got lots to talk about. Um, our club, Half of West County, previously had a women's team. It's something that the whole club are really keen to, to relaunch as well. I'm going to mention this really early on in this episode. I'm going to flash up this questionnaire link that is still available for anyone interested in getting involved so that as many people see this as possible. But I do want to talk specifically about the women's game and how for West County, but let's kick off into, into your role first then. And I think it's somewhat easier to say what you don't do in the, in oh the media. Gosh. <laughs> I must say, you know, in, in a week that we celebrate the women's game and, and women leaders and ambassadors in, in Wales in particular, you're absolutely smashing it. Fair play, you know, you're, you're here, there and everywhere. Um, presenter, reporter, producer, BBC squad goals, podcaster, ambassador. It, it's a, a wide ranging CV you've got. Where did, um, where did your media career start then, Gabriella? All right, you're too kind. <laughs> but uh, so for me, it all started. Um, gosh, it would have been 2020. So basically, I've always had a love for fo- uh, for sport, for football, and growing up, I've taken part in sport myself. I always wanted to work in sport, but actually never knew how to kind of get into it. So I went to university originally to do um, a degree in sport and exercise science. So that was kind of my background. Uh, in sport, uh, I realised once I graduated, actually, I wasn't sure if that was kind of the route I wanted to go down. I did go back to do a master's in it, lasted two weeks. Um, I was in a hospital for a bit and I realised, you know, you just think of things thinking, actually, I don't know if this is what I'm actually going to be happy doing. So I left and took a little bit of a break. And then I found the sports broadcast uh, master's course at Cardiff Met. Um, I looked into that and saw all the incredible things people that had been on the course were previously doing, like Shauna David, for example, who's smashing life and everything. Um, so I saw this course and I thought I would absolutely, you know, looks like it looks like a bit of me. I'd love to get into to doing something like that. So I applied, had not really any experience in that particular area before. Um, and I got in and I guess the rest is history. I absolutely loved everything about that course. It was during lockdown, so very difficult um but it's just gone from strength to strength since to be honest with you um when i was at university i started a podcast uh, she has a goal in mind so that's all about celebrating women in sport because i felt like there wasn't really anything out there mm-hmm. that i as a student could have you know looked looked out for for more information or more i guess inspiration on how to find a path into sport media mm-hmm. and then through that, you were meeting connections. Um, I got the job on Swans TV, so I did that uh, for a season um, and absolutely loved that. And I guess it's just, yeah, I got from strength to strength since there then. So that was my kind of background into it. I did the Masters in sports broadcast and and here I am. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Oh, fantastic, like I said. And I think the other sort of, I mentioned ambassador role at the moment, you and many others are leading the way as ambassadors for the her Game 2 initiative. I was aware of it previously, but certainly with us celebrating it across the country this weekend, I've been able to look into it and find out some more about it. There's one specific Half West County supporter who I am going to speak to this weekend if uh, if they're attending the, our home fixture this Friday night because there is an opportunity to to apply and become an adv- ambassador for, for your club. So, again, any uh, anybody watching who would be interested in looking at it from their perspective at their clubs... I'd advise you to go and have a look at the website. But can you explain a bit more about it then from how you got involved perhaps and what what you're doing about it? 
Yeah, hundred percent. So I I've only got involved over the last few months, to be honest with you. But I've always been a supporter of her game too since it started. I thought it was incredible because you know as women in sport, we do unfortunately um, you know experience discrimination and, and sexism, particularly I guess in in football. So I thought this was a fantastic initiative. And you know when they first started, we had Amy Clement, you know, on the podcast talking about it. Um, so I've always followed her game too, and I was always. You know, in awe of everything that they were doing with the partnerships with you know uh, various various clubs and leagues so I thought it was incredible and I and then with Rupa as well who runs uh, her game to Cymru I'd, I'd work with her a few times and they always say oh what can I do to help you know how can I get involved and then finally a few months ago I, I officially got involved as an ambassador um, which is fantastic because it's something that really resonates with me and I think if people can see through everything that I kind of do not only in professionally but in my personal life, I'm all about women empowerment uh, with my podcast. She has a goal in mind and I've been an ambassador for Women's Aid for 10 years. So it kind of all aligns with my values. So it was, felt like a natural kind of progression, I guess, to be a Hergim 2 um, ambassador and particularly in Wales as well, yeah. which is so important for me. Um, and we're all about making the game welcome for everyone. You know, we say obviously, especially females, but for everyone included, it needs to be a welcoming place um, to... Uh, raise awareness of the sexism and discrimination that does go on and um, because unfortunately it is a lot of it for example um this morning I actually did a workshop with uh, Swansea City Foundation and young girls who play football at school and they came to do like a, a little tournament day so I had held workshops with those two uh, groups um and I spoke about sexism what is sexism and they're only in year five and six so they're quite young mm -hmm. um, and they knew what it was they told me about their experiences of it which I was quite shocked to be honest but at a young age they were well aware so this is why her game two is is around um to try and hopefully you know eradicate that in the future and just make it a safer place for for women and girls to be a part of yeah let's talk about the women's game then i think uh, over the last few years there's been some breakthroughs some fantastic breakthroughs uh, i think with the women's game you know there's, there's live tv fixtures mm. that you see now almost every weekend record attendances you know increasing attendance figures as well across i suppose grassroots all the way up to the international team you know, you've played a big part of that as well, as you mentioned, Sean Ed and others who are really driving it from a media perspective. But what would you say have been the factors in, in, in the success over the last few years then? I definitely think the media representation has been, you know, key to it. Having those games on Scoria. Um, mm. I remember working as my first kind of paid reporter job was a, was a reporter for Scoria pitch side. Um, it was at Cardiff Met. I think it was Cardiff Met against Swansea City. Um, and that for me was incredible to see that this this game was going to be you know televised. That was fantastic, and I think it's only increased further and further, hasn't it, over over the years? Um, and not only that, I think obviously exposure is, is fantastic. But the fact that these these teams have now been able to, especially Cardiff City and Swansea City, they've got to play in in the stadium. So Swansea.com Stadium, Cardiff City had played had played in Cardiff, um, and I think. With young girls being able to see that, that the potential that there is in the women's game, I think that only adds to kind of the growth of it. And also, you know, with Wrexham now coming in to the Adrian Premier, it's getting more competitive. But as I think a couple of years ago, it was the same teams, you know, doing well mm. um, in those leagues. But actually now it's definitely getting more competitive. They've signed semi-professional contracts, with, which are which is incredible to see, you know, in such a small space of time that's grown and also mm -hmm. the national team doing so well as well. You know, although they've they've still yet to qualify for an international uh, tournament, they've nearly got there. Um, they're doing fantastic. And and I guess that's growing and growing and we're having record crowds there. So it's, it's brilliant to see from, from, you know, a perspective in Wales. And I also think I've got to say, you know, with the Lionesses as well in the Euros, and seeing the record-breaking crowds that were in during the Euros. Unfortunately, Wales weren't there, but that's only going to have a trickle effect down, I think, into the grassroots. Um, and it's, yeah, it's brilliant. And it's, it's, again, it's a short space of time that this has all happened, but um, it's only going to get bigger and bigger, isn't it? Love it. Yeah, I wanted to pick up. International was a question I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to the club scene a sec. With the club scene, you know, I watched a bit of um, Wrexham TNS, the, the Cup semi-final that was... Oh, the, the boot energy, I think it is, yeah. the Welsh Cup semi-final yeah. from, from last weekend. I think Wrexham edged it 1-0 at the end. It was a it was a really competitive fixture, you know, up at uh, the Essity Stadium in, in Flint. 
it sets up. I think Cardiff City are, are leading mm-hmm. the league, and it's going to be a Wrexham Cardiff final. Swansea are not too far behind in the league standings as well. I think Aberystwyth made it into the top yeah. four. Looking at that, those league tables at their split, it's a really competitive league. And it, you know, the, the Gennaro, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Gennaro Adran, uh, you know, season is is really exciting one this season. And even the you know the teams in the bottom half as well. Again, there's there's some really good fixtures going on. And I should have said Nicky John as well is obviously doing the the coverage. Are you still out and about doing those fixtures as well? Yeah, and well, unfortunately, I haven't been able to go to the games due to the work that I like already have on the weekend doing the BBC squad goals on the weekend yeah. and so on. So unfortunately, I haven't actually been able to go to the games um, any longer. But I do definitely keep an eye on them and watch them. That's something you pointed out there, the Boot Energy, and I think mm. that that cup, that that partnership with Boot Energy has also been a key, I think, to helping the growth of that game and and to have yeah Nikki John being like sort of a, a dedicated reporter towards the women's game I think that's fantastic to have um the fact that Aberystwyth Swith are in the top four yeah. is amazing they're having the best season they've probably had for for quite a while if not you know in in their history I think that, that's fantastic um and it's a really exciting thing to be a part of now I think women's football especially in Wales and um, even in, I think it's the in the Adran South, Britain Ferry ladies, they're doing fantastic. They, they just missed out last season on promotion against Wrexham. Um, and again, it's just so many competitive teams involved. Um, I'm really excited for the future of it. Love it. Well, we'll be keeping a close eye on all that. One day, perhaps in half a West will be in that conversation too. Yeah. But we'll, we'll come to that later on. International then, I want to sort of... Pay reference, Half West has actually got a long history with internationals from, uh, well, not only the town of Half West, but Pembrokeshire. There's former Welsh international goalkeeper Joe Price, who was at Arsenal once upon a time. And I think from the other side of North London, we had uh, ex-Spurs now, Angara James, who recently left for uh, across the Atlantic again to uh, Seattle, I think. So big congratulations to Angara from that. I, I know well Fionn Bowen in Narbeth, I think, is in the Wales under 17. So there's a lot of others too as well. I've probably missed off there. Um, who are doing really well for the for the Cymru team. Rian Wilkinson has sort of started a, a new era now with the national, uh, you know, the boss of the national team. The the draw, I think, for the women's Euros 2025 was this week. I think I'm right in saying uh, Ukraine, Croatia, and Kosovo they've been drawn against there. Uh, I listened to an interview that Scorio put out actually on social saying that, you know, they played, I think, Croatia recently before, but Kosovo was a new challenge, etc. But, you know, with the, the trajectory, I suppose, going upwards in the right direction, do you think the Women's Euro 2025 is, is the one that we're going to get to? Well, fingers crossed. Um, obviously, with, with Rianne Wilkinson coming in, I think that's a fantastic appointment. Um, she's done fantastically over, you know, with her national team, um, Canada, but also in, in the in the US as well. She won the league over there with her team as a manager. So that's fantastic. Um, so to have someone like her here in Wales and someone who understands actually, you know, what it's meant, what it feels like to be mm-hmm. Welsh, because obviously her mother's Welsh, she spent time here. I think that's key to that. Yeah. She understands yeah. what it means. But also, I do think actually like Wales have such a good chance of topping that group however it's such a difficult path for some reason the way that the qualifications work so they still even if they top that group they still have to play a playoff and yeah. it's a really complicated because I think they're in league b um in the nation's league and it's all just really complicated I've been trying to read up and trying to understand it because um They've made it really difficult, but I think they've got a good chance. It's just all yeah. down to playoffs, to be honest with you. So I guess it's the luck of the draw, who who they would get in the playoffs and so on. Um, unfortunately, that that's a really complicated way of going through. But fingers crossed because they deserve it. They've you know put in the work for years and years. It's not just a yeah. you know over the past year or two. It's it's been you know the, the the women before them have paved that way for them. You know to get professional contracts. And and everything with the Welsh team to have equal pay with the men's team, it's all fantastic. So yeah, fingers crossed we do get to you know a major tournament, and hopefully twenty twenty five will be the one. Is the one, yeah. yeah. You you mentioned lionesses. I'm thinking Wembley now. I've seen on the social media this week. I think your podcast, as you said, that she has a goal in mind with Darcy Morris. I believe your your co-host. Yeah. Uh, what was the Wembley uh, event all about? 
Well, that was it was so exciting. We had an email a couple of weeks ago inviting us to the launch of the Adobe Women's FA Cup. So Adobe have now got a partnership with the Women's FA Cup, uh, which is incredible to have a company as, as big as Adobe invest in in the women's game. So we got invited as part of our podcast um, and it was fantastic. We went to Wembley on Monday night um, and we had a panel there. It was Rashmin Chowdhury, who was the presenter. So she's, you might've seen it on, she does talk sport and she does TNT. Yeah. So she's, you know, mega, a mega name. Um, Alicia Russo was there. So fantastic, Lioness World Cup, um, you know, said finalist and a Euro winner. So that was brilliant. And we had also Farrah Williams and a few others then on the, on the panel. So they spoke about, you know, the women's game and I guess their backgrounds. And, and that was really inspiring. Um, and it was just a, a really great event to be a part of. And to get, uh, it was my first time at Wembley, actually. So oh, um, it was fantastic. We got to go and see the actual trophy and anyway in the stadium as well. And it, yeah, brilliant. It was a really brilliant evening and an honour to be invited to it, to be honest, um, as part of our podcast. And for something that we started at university to be invited to an event like that, it was phenomenal. It's just how busy well, I can't get over it. <laughs> I, I tuned into it. You were on BBC Squad Goals, the sort of the audio coverage, if you like, of the, the football league. I tuned into that this week. Your uh, your chat about managers only being sacked within a transfer window style. <laughs> I heard your response to that. I agree with you. I don't think that's ever going to work. But I think most Cymru League followers are probably uh, know you most for your presenting work on the cup draws mm-hmm. on uh, on Red Wall Plus and, and whenever they go out on social media. I know you've done quite a bit of work with uh, our friends Eat Sleep Media who, who have joined us on the podcast before. I'm always rooting for you when you try and pronounce some of those uh, long Welsh club names, particularly in the early rounds. But how do you enjoy those events then? Oh, do you know what I love? I love doing a cup draw. It's the highlight of my week when I, when I get that uh, booked in. <laughs> I, I really, really enjoy doing them. Um, I've actually been doing them for quite a couple of years now to be honest like I started doing the we used to go to the games and I used to cover the the matches and then we'd throw it to a cup draw and do it that way um so to actually be fronting it I think is fantastic and I and it's great that the FAW have kind of invested in doing it this way now it's it's definitely more professional um which the, you know the, the the leagues and the cups deserve um and I, I love doing it and for the for the um names i i do definitely practice beforehand i get the list because sometimes <laughs> you know we get a, a, quite a few cup draws in kind of one goal after yeah. each other which you know they can be quite quite long when especially at the start when there's like 100 and something teams involved so yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely uh, have a practice beforehand, but it still uh, gets quite difficult and my, I get a bit tongue-tied when it gets to them, especially if you've seen on, on my social media, uh, Llanu Flynn was the name that I was <laughs> practicing, um, and I had, I had um, the thumbs up from them that I that I did okay, So um, and I do speak Welsh, so I know it's... It shouldn't be as hard, but when there's so many different names involved, then, you know, it, it gets a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. muddled up. <laughs> Well, like I said, fingers crossed you're, you're picking out the uh, half of West County in one of those draws. But we'll come on to our club then. So as a club, as you know, everybody's aware, we've really progressed in a lot of areas, I think, over the last few years in particular. And whilst we currently haven't got that official ladies team, we do have some good foundations, I think, already in place. It's a, certainly a developing area. You know, there's some great girls playing in the academy age groups. Um, mentioned our history of internationals from uh, sort of that, our area. I'll also add that I think our fan base as well, particularly over the last few years, has has grown in female numbers as well. You know, and that's not just a certain age range as well. There's, you know, young young girls coming to watch just as much as perhaps more even teenagers in the twenties and beyond that as well. I think it would be welcomed with open arms. I think for us to do that. So I know we've gone into partnership as a club with. Um, He's a former player, actually. He's a current academy coach, Mikey Loveridge, who does um, Rising Stars. is a is a uh, children's sort of coaching program that he offers. So we're looking at sort of develop that pathway even further. And obviously, I mentioned the questionnaire that's gone out, etc. But where would you say, as a, a club aspiring to to develop a you know a girl section and a lady section, what are the things you know that you would sort of signpost to or give us advice in in developing that area? 
to be honest, I think you're already making a great start with you know the academy and and the fact that so many female and young girls are coming to support you is fantastic. Um, I think things like what I, what I did with the Swansea City Foundation today is is great. Maybe get schools involved in the area, um, taste the sessions for them, and then obviously I think it starts from from the grassroots, doesn't it? It starts from those younger age grades, and then they will trickle up. And the fact they've got like in Hara James mm. as a role model to look up yeah. to that is that's brilliant um, and it shows them that you know you can come from no matter where in Wales there's there's opportunities for you there and you can be a professional footballer ended up in in America which is yeah. incredible so I think what you're doing already is a great start but I'm sure you know at her game too we can definitely you know help with that as well and um, if you've got in touch with us um you know doing these workshops and getting more more young girls inspired I think it's about inspiring them isn't it um but in terms I guess starting the, the first ladies team mm -hmm. uh, that probably wouldn't be my kind of input in, in starting it but we would definitely you know be able to help in I guess getting the word out there and, and getting the awareness out there that um you know we need a club in Haverford West definitely yeah, that would be good. That would be good. um so I think that would be fantastic um but definitely like these workshops that I did this morning were, were brilliant to see so many young girls um wanting to play football and and I think it is, you know, it's it's something that if you invest in it, they will come. Um, and we've witnessed that witnessed that everywhere, not just you know in Wales, um, over the UK. It's it's fantastic, and there is a call in for it definitely. So I think you're definitely making it a, a great start with you know an academy, um, and then hopefully in the not too near in the near future that you'll uh, be able to get a women's team going. Yeah, fingers crossed. You'll have to bring your boots down and uh, and turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, I'd, I'd give it a go, but I don't know if uh, if I'd last too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, fingers crossed we can keep moving in, in the right direction for it. And as it happens, I think our big fixture tomorrow night, this Friday night, is uh, it's going to see a number of the academy girls take into the field as mascots, as it is obviously International Women's Day. So hopefully that will inspire some of them you know, to be walking out themselves as a, as a future bluebird representing the county. But yeah, big game this week for us. It's set up to be a great occasion. We're hoping for a, a bumper crowd to be joining us. Uh, it's Penabont, closest rivals in the race for the European playoffs as well. So it's going to be a bit of a nail-biter, I think. And uh, the first chance to congratulate both Rhys Abrasesi and Lee Jenkins too on their Wales Sea call-ups this week. So I'm sure supporters are going to be uh, nice and loud about that one. Obviously, mentioned several times that her game two, Cymru, has been celebrated this week across Cymru and Adron Leagues. Are you heading to any events or any any games yourself? Unfortunately, I can't on the, on the weekend. It's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I'm doing BBC Squad Goals on Saturday, so obviously I missed, missed the Saturday. And obviously Six Nations is on, so I'm doing a bit of rugby work on, on Sunday as well. So a busy weekend. Um, I'm doing a bit of celebrating of International Women's Day tomorrow um, with Women's Aid and things. But unfortunately, I won't be at any of the Here Game 2 matches. But I just wanted to mention there, like the... You know that that um, partnership with the Ardron Leagues and and Hugin Two Cymru has been like monumental for for Welsh uh, football. I think it's fantastic. There's only been about I think six months or since the start of, of the season, um, but it's it's been fantastic to see so many uh, matches be dedicated. Yeah. to her game too as well um it's it's been brilliant and even in the efl there's been so many you know yeah, included yeah. um so it's fantastic to get that support from you guys um and yeah hopefully more more young girls that will be coming to watch they'll be able to you know get inspired by it and, and enjoy themselves as well which is all what it's all about isn't it coming and enjoying um and feeling comfortable and confident in in being a football fan and making it a safe space for them to come to which uh, yeah, is fantastic Awesome. awesome. Well, listen, Gabriella, thank you so much for the chat. It's been really good to get an insight into everything that you're you're doing in, in media land. But good luck with it all uh, as you go forward to keep up uh, flying the flag for Welsh football across the border as well. But rest assured, everyone at Half West County will be cheering you on at the next draw, uh, picking the, the names out of the hat for your pronunciations next season and that. But no, thank you again. Really appreciate your time and uh, looking forward to this weekend. Oh, thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure and good luck to you guys on the weekend as well. Uh, what, a, what an exciting fixture that's going to be on the weekend. So, yeah, good luck and, and thank you very much for having me.